man, the light is beautiful. If this female gets up now and walks past me in this open bit, the photos are going to be amazing. Oh, she's up, she's up. I'm gonna try this a new way. I'm gonna show you the tricks that I know. I'm getting tired of talking. And I need more of a show right now. It's time that you made your mind up. Cause lately all it ever does is change. Feels like we're only talking. Man, I love that song because it means it's time for a road trip. That's right, those of you that follow the channel will know that every year I do at least one big overlanding trip. In 2021, Yei Devet and I went to Botswana for two weeks when we visited Kubu Island, Naipans and Kwai. And then last year my wife and I went back to Kwai when the Fanavestesans joined us. And we even flew over the Okavango Delta and then finished our trip in the central Kalahari. This year, I left it a little bit late, but I'm going to the Kalahari Trans Frontier Park for 16 unforgettable days. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous, not only because I'll be traveling alone this time, but also because it is very hot and dry. It's November, and here where I am in Hutzbreit, the temperature is already in the high 30s. And I hear in the Kalahari, it's even worse. Now I know a lot of you are probably already thinking, come on Philia, just show us the lions already. Well, you're going to have to be a little bit patient because this is going to be a long series. I really want to share the whole overlanding experience with you. And that includes the packing process, especially considering the fact that I had Tom Cruise fully kitted for overlanding recently at Big Country. So the first thing I'm going to do is take all this stuff that I've got under my carport and we'll pop it on the roof. Look who's helping me pack. Hey guys. Man, I tell you what, this hood spread heat is a killer. Next up, let's put up the high lift jack. Sure, it looks like I have just come out from under a waterfall. Like I said, this is not going to be the last time you see me sweating. It is incredibly hot in humid here in Woodsprate. But hey, everything's on top of Tom Cruiser. The jerry cans are empty at the moment because I might not actually need them. I'm taking them with just in case there's a fuel issue at camps like Mata Mata or Nosop. So at the moment they're empty and I've also left the water can empty because that's additional weight at the moment that I don't want to put on top of the roof. Remember, every car can only take so many kilograms and this Prado 90 series can only take 100 kilograms on the roof. And the roof rack's already quite heavy. So is the wood box, the awning, and then that second spare wheel. So I first got to get to the Kalahari, remove some of the other stuff before I put extra weight on. But of course, when I get there, the chairs will come down and the table will come down and so will the jerry can. So yeah, that's basically all the packing on the roof done. Now it's just all the goodies inside, and then tomorrow we do the Kalahari. Because I was traveling alone, I didn't want to drive too far each day. So I decided to overnight in Pretoria. But first, I had to make a stop at my favorite camera store. 
So I've just pulled in here at Outdoor Photo in Pretoria East to pick up some rental gear. I usually photograph with a Canon R6 and 100 to 500 when I'm out on safari, but I decided to also take along a Canon R7 and a 600 Prime to give me a little bit of extra reach there in the Kalahari. So if you're ever looking for a great place to pick up some rental gear or to buy some gear, check out Outdoor Photo. I'll leave a link in the video description. One of my favorite additions to Tom Cruiser is the double draw system from Big Country because it allows me to safely store and lock away my camera gear when I'm traveling through places like Pretoria or Johannesburg. The following day, however, cameras and lenses made way for fresh groceries in Uppington, my final overnight stop before I reached the Kalahari. I also used the opportunity to fill my water tank on top of the roof rack with 40 litres of drinking water, and the plan was to top it up from time to time as it ran low. The following morning I left Uppington before sunrise so that I could get to Tuerifirin before all the best campsites were taken. Man, it is amazing to be back in the Kalahari Let's go find a nice big tree. Man, I can't tell you how valuable it is to get to Tuerifirin early if you're staying here for a while. Like I said, I got here at about 8 o'clock this morning and just as I had expected, I had the campsite to myself, I could pick and choose and I took the biggest tree and it also happens to be the one with the best view. After a relaxing day in camp, it was time for my first game drive. But first I headed to the filling station to deflate my tires to the recommended 1.6 bar. Not only will it make your game drives more comfortable, but it also helps to prevent excessive corrugation of the sandy roads in the park. Before I could head into the park, I first had to pick up my permit at the gate, where you have to indicate which route you'll be driving, just in case you have a breakdown and have to be helped after the gates close. Right, it's time for my first game drive, the first one of 31 game drives. I don't have too many expectations for this afternoon um, because it always takes a day just to get your ducks in a row. So I'll use this afternoon to figure out what I'm going to do with all this camera gear, get to know this uh, Canon 600mm Prime, which is a bit of a monster to photograph with, and I'll just see what I can find. Let's go on a game drive. It's about six o'clock in the afternoon and I've stopped here at Salma Fluing Waterhole. 
And what I realized in the short little game drive this afternoon is that your chances of actually seeing anything moving before 6.30 is virtually zero. It's just way too hot. But that's not an issue. I think what I'll do in the afternoons is just do exactly this, find a waterhole, park off with the hope that something thirsty comes down. And then in the mornings when it's a little bit cooler, I'll cover more ground, drive a little bit faster with the hope of bumping into some active cats. For now, I'm just incredibly grateful to be back. I don't mind the heat at all. I may not have seen much on my first game drive, but it was wonderful to be back in one of my favorite national parks. I've just come across my first big cat. It's a cheetah and it's probably about, I don't know, five, six kilometers from Tuerifiren, not too far from Salmafluing. It's just lying in the shade at the moment. I saw a herd of Gemsbok just looking into the shade of a big tree and that's when I spotted it. Gemsbok are now walking straight towards the cheetah. It's gone flat, flat crouching behind a tuft of grass or a bush or something. Let's see what happens. I can't see from the way that it's lying whether its belly is full or not, but this cheetah has just spotted a small herd of springbok way, way down the river, probably about say close to 800 meters or so but it's looking at them intently so fingers crossed it's hungry right she got up and she moved it's a female and she's very skinny so I'm sure she's hungry she moved about 200 meters towards where those springbok are and then she went down again in deep shade of a big camel thorn tree and she's pretty much invisible now. I only spotted her earlier because I could see a little head and because the Gemsbok had their heads up. But I promise you, if you had to drive past here now, you wouldn't see her. Man, this is so cool. This cheetah's gotten up and she's basically walking straight towards me and towards the springbok. This cheetah can now see the springbok. She's probably about 500 meters away and they're all huddled under a tree. I'm just reversing to keep up with her and to keep her on my side so it's easier to film or photograph if she does make a chase. But she's gonna have to decide now whether she's gonna actively stalk them or whether she's gonna go down and ambush them hoping that they move her way. I've just got a few bushes in the way so if it does happen, I hope I see it. I never saw the kill because it never happened. The Springbok eventually safely made their way to Samafloe, whilst I made my way to camp where I created a makeshift office by adding some side panels to my ostrich wing awning and then charged all my gear with my trusty Bluetti EB70 portable power bank. So it's nearly six o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I left that cheetah female this morning close to so I'm a fluent waterhole and I have learned since that it's an old female called Henry. She's about 12 years old, one of the oldest cheetahs in the park. And I've just found her again. I would guess she's about 600 meters from Sama Fluing itself. And uh, she's basically just walking a little bit, lying down again, walking a little bit, lying down again, exactly like she did this morning. And there's a herd of Gemsbok checking her out again, maybe even the same herd as this morning.
man, the light is beautiful. If this female gets up now and walks past me in this open bit, the photos are going to be amazing. Oh, she's up, she's up. Wow. Everything is primed for the perfect shot. Beautiful late afternoon golden light, open spaces, and she's walking in the right direction. Oh my goodness, that was the most beautiful cheetah sighting I've ever had in the Kalahari. Man, the light was so perfect. She's going to drink now at Salma Fluing, but there's a ton of cars there and we only have 15 minutes until the gate is closed. So I've decided I'm going to forego the drinking shots. It's not the best water hole for photography. Rather get to the gate first, which means I won't have to eat dust or race all the way back. But what a way to end my first full day in the Kalahari. Come on! So it's about seven o'clock in the morning here at Malkflay picnic site and because everybody at Tuira Firin has been talking about the lions in this area, I made the classic mistake this morning to chase the lions as opposed to just waiting for the Kalahari to show them to me. I even drove past two cheetahs along the way. Henry that I spent the whole day with yesterday is still at Salmafluing and then I came across another big beautiful male close to Roipitz but because the light is so poor today I decided to carry on and search for the lions which I ended up not finding. I did however see a beautiful yellow cape cobra right next to the road and it even lifted its head and spread its hood and I got some incredible photographs. It's a very good reminder to wear closed shoes when you're out here in the Kalahari especially in the evenings in the campsite because things like cape cobras, puff adders and thick-tailed scorpions are certainly around and if you get bitten or stung out here you're very far from help. Now speaking about closed shoes, Jim Green Footwear is the sponsor of this series and I'm wearing their amazing shoelies which is basically something between a valley and a shoe and throughout this series I'm going to tell you more about these incredibly comfortable fellies. I've left a link in the video description if you want to learn more or order it online. Now this morning as you can see it's overcast, a little bit of respite from the heat and I tell you last night was unbearably hot. Luckily though I was able to keep myself cool by taking the Bluetti into the tent and running a fan and I've left the cover off the tent as well for a bit of a breeze to go through. Now I'm going to head back down south toward Tuerifira now and enjoy the sort of slightly cooler weather. Hopefully I'm lucky to bump into some cats that are still active. But first I'm going to eat one of three Brai Broikies that I made myself last night. That's a Brai Broikie for you English people or a barbecue sandwich if you're American. <laughs> It must have rained between KK and Roypitz shortly before I arrived in the park because on this section of road there was actually green grass under the trees and fresh leaves on the three thorn bushes, attracting plenty of springbok.
As I watched them, the sun made an appearance for the first time that morning. Man, how cute are those little baby ostriches? It's so special to see the Kalahari transform, albeit very slowly, to see the new life. I want to also use this opportunity to thank all my patrons. Your support on the channel has been completely overwhelming and it's partly because of you that I'm able to do this full time. So a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, for those of you that don't know, Patreon is a platform that allows people like you to support content creators like myself by making a small monthly donation. And in return for that donation, you get rewards like behind the scenes footage, mentions in the video, uh, some smartphone wallpapers of my best wildlife photographs, and even access to my online course called Wildlife Photography for Beginners and Amateurs. So if you want to support the channel, go and check out the link that I've left at the top of the video description and support the channel. For now, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching episode one of Kalahari Trip 2023. I'll see you in the next episode. In the next episode, I go for a run, I get my feet scent marked by a cheeky meerkat, and I have one of my best leopard sightings ever in the Kalahari.